is going to make his move. He'll have to do it soon. He goes to the inside. Now he looks to the outside. He cannot make a move as Labonte will not let the move open up. Now Earnhardt goes to the inside of Terry, and he's going to pass him. Man, oh, man. And Dale Earnhardt is going to do it. He's going to win his fifth consecutive Goodies 500. There's the checkered flag. Earnhardt has won it again. Very happy Tony Erie. Tony, what do you guys got in that race car that nobody else has? I think the, the biggest deal is between the seat and the steering wheel, really. When I come 14, 15, being around those cars, it was so interesting, so fascinating to see them. I was eager, you know, I was young. I was like, you know, this is all I want to do. He'd go over there and hang out with Dale. I'd just keep working, you know. I'm just like, what? what's the next thing I can get my hands on? And when he turned in his hours, it was 90 hours. And Dale had a fit. So he said, we're not going to pay you by the hour anymore. You're going on salary. Yeah, I think it was my first lesson in money right there. <laughs> I got 90 hours. I was getting paid $5 an hour. I think I made like 1100 bucks that week. And he's like, I ain't paying you that. You can take this 600 That's all you get. <laughs> I was like, OK. And then he come in the next day. And he's like, oh, by the way, you're going on salary next week for $200. I told him, I said, I think I just got messed up right there. <laughs> He didn't care if he made you mad. He'd chew you out for, for doing something that he didn't like, and then in 10 minutes later, you was his best friend. You got to get it where I can turn it hard enough. Right there, right there is a lot of problems getting it's in there. Bracket. I can't get out of the pit. Up here, if we pit behind somebody, I can't get out of the pit spot. Huh. He, he'd make you feel about two inches tall when you did it, but in 10 minutes later, you know, you was eight foot tall. Well, we ain't glowed up yet. We can fix this. Dale Jr. I don't think is like that. I think Dale Jr. is kind of uh, soft-hearted. He don't like to hurt people's feelings. He's kind of, kind of mellow. You're quitting early. Damn, I'm taking a good while to work on it. That means we're gonna go faster. Try. Dale Sr. He came to me and wanted to know. He said, "You think you can make a race car driver out of Dale Jr.?" And I said, "Well, I don't know why." why you don't spend the money on your own kid instead of spending it on somebody else's. And he said, well, if you think you can make a race car driver out of him, I'm going to put him in the bush car. So, you know, that was our goal. We took Dell Jr. to the racetrack and letting him learn how to drive. That was great. I was taking Tony Jr. to the racetrack and letting him learn to be a crew chief. I said, then one of these days, me and you will sit on the porch and drink beer and watch the race on TV. He's led 209 laps, and the Intimidator's son is the dominator today. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins at Milwaukee. The Earnhardt family is back to victory lane again. Tony and I took a chance on him when we put him in there to start with a couple years ago, and uh, he's, done, he's done the job. He's carried the mail. Well, that's the story from the 1999 championship plan down here on Pitt Road. Dale Jr. was that kid that always wanted his dad's attention. I don't think Dale ever pushed him to be a race car driver. Just uh, Dale Jr. knew that was one way he could he could get his daddy's attention. You know, his dad was just really, really proud of him, and they were just becoming like me and Pops here. You know, uh, we already had that connection, and you know, and it was cool to be able to see Dale Jr. and Dale Sr. have that connection. Everything's just going perfect for everybody. Get him in the three car now. Oh, big trouble. Big wreck behind him. After the accident in turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. That was pretty hard, you know, because, you know, you'd seen that kid. It looked like he spent his whole life trying to impress his dad. And, you know, when that happened, it's like, Who's he going to press now? He turned into a man right quick. The people would not believe some of the stuff that went on after that man got killed. And uh, all, we, all we could hear was, this is what Dale would want, this is what Dale would want, what, this is what Dale would want. And the, and the problem that I had with that during that period was that most of the people that was telling me that, they didn't know what Dale Earnhardt wanted. You know, They didn't know him long enough to know what he wanted. And that kind of bothered me. And uh, and I think at that point, the engine shop started going downhill. Let's see, following now, 
real hard. Yeah, I seen that. Just uh, stay with it, but if you think you feel the vibration, you come on. That's the come in. Just come on around that corner there and just come on. That ain't no big... I looked at it as I'd become a number on a sheet of paper at that point. You know, I'd probably work there for nothing, you know, if they wanted me to. But from that point on, it just turned into, all right, you're a number. Dale Jr. came to me and told me he was leaving, that he wasn't going to resign, which was probably in the end of February or 1st of March. It was a long time before he ever made it. He came to me and told me he was not going to resign. When he told me he was going to go somewhere else, I was like, all right, I'm going with you. At 32 years of age, the same age as my father was when he made his final and most important career decision, it is the time for me to compete on a consistent basis and contend for championships now. All the while, it is time for me to continue his legacy in the way I only know I can by taking the life lessons that he taught me, be a man, race hard, and contend for championships. Since that is what I plan to do, I feel strongly that I, I would have my father's blessing.